So here is our problem two now. Now, it's a very comprehensive problem. Problem number two, if you look at the statement, it says analyze the given beam using stiffness method. F support A rotates by 0 0.002 radians clockwise. Support B settles down by 0 0.75 inch and support C settles down by 0 0.5 inch. Rotations and settlements are involved, so we will be writing the actual numbers now. So E is given 30,000 KSI means it's a steel beam and I is equal to 800 inches to the power 4. EI value, what will be the unit of this EI value now? E is skip per square inch and I is inch to the power 4. So 2 inches, inches square will go, will cancel with this one inch square. One is in the denominator, other is in the numerator and we will be left with inch square so kip inch square but we will be using the kip and feet unit so let's convert that into feet unit so 300 uh, this 30000 multiplied by 800 divided by 12 to the power square conversion from inches to the feet units now so 30,000 multiplied by 800 divided by 144. So 156 is 0.6. Keep fits where this will be the EI. And wherever we have EI value now, we will be using this uh, number now. Now description of the beam now. At A we have a fixed support. B we have roller support. At C we have roller support. And then this we have uh, overhang portion also, six feet, overhang span is six feet. So let's this free joint is joint D now. If we look at the total indeterminacy of this problem now, so at B we have two degree of freedom, at C we have two degree of freedom, and then at this D free end we have three degree of freedom now. So it is becoming a seven degrees indeterminate problem now. Seven degrees with the hand calculations, it may take maybe three, four hours to solve this problem. So now we need to act now smartly. And let's see if, if we can now, A information is again not given. So what we will do, we will ignore the axial effects now. Axial effects means three members we need to take out now. So three members, if we take out, still it will become four degrees indeterminate problem. Now, let's now do more, uh, act more smartly. How can we do it? This overhang portion very easily you can find out its member and actions and all these things. How? If we want to put its equivalent effect on joint C, so what can we do? We can find out its vertical reaction. We can put it here. And we can find its moment also equivalent moment. We can put at this location. Now we will discuss this how to now reduce further. So if we can take away now this portion and put its equivalent effects here at joint C, we can reduce this to two degrees indeterminate problem, because with, then we don't need to find out the vertical this translation here and the rotation here because already we will take its effect at joint C now. So that way it will become two degrees indeterminate problem, which will be the rotation at B and rotation at C now, the way we did in problem one, and then we can follow these same steps now. So how to involve the overhang portion? This is one now, the uh, purpose of solving this problem. And then how to involve the rotations and the settlements. Now, in sketch, if you see diagrammatically, the rotation point 0, 0.002 radius in clockwise direction is given at A. Settlement in the downward direction at B, 0 0.75 inches given. And settlement at C, 0.5 inch, it is given now. Kinematic indeterminacy, we will solve this by two degrees. 
from 7 we reduced to 4 degrees and from 4 then we took away, we took out this overhang portion, we included its effect, how it will be included, we will discuss in the following slide. So we reduced the problem to 2 degrees in determinate problem. Very conveniently now you can solve it manually. So here kinematic indeterminacy is 2. So 2 redundant joint displacement should be chosen and we are ignoring the exhale effects here. So quickly now you try this sketch and I'll be running you to these now various steps now. Now, Remember, here we have four kinds of loadings now. One is the directly applied loadings, which is 30 kip in the center, not in the center. If you look at this location, 30 kip, now it is even off center. It is 10 feet from support A, while it is 15 feet from support B. Then we have UDL, B, C, and D span. So this is the direct loading now we have applied. Then we have the indirect loading. One is this rotation at A, settlement at B, and settlement at C. So now remember, while we are generating the ADL matrix, we will be now taking the effect of all these four kind loadings. One is because of the direct loading, which is 30 kip and 2 kip per foot and the other one is the settlements now three kinds of now these preconditions are involved so we will be taking the effect of those one also so once we find out the member and actions because of all these four loading conditions we will be adding them up and the resultant will become your ADL matrix so with this now we move to the next slide now here now you see I was saying that we will be taking the effect of this overhang portion. So how much is the moment coming here? It will be 2 times 6. This will become your equivalent pointed load. And it's now centroid from this support is this L divided by 2, will, which will become 6 divided by 2. So this is simply WL squared divided by 2 now. So 2 times 6 squared divided by 2, we get this 36. And this 36, it is counterclockwise on the right hand side, so its effect at C will come in the clockwise direction. So clockwise, now if it is corresponding to this D2 now, which is the, our unknown joint displacement, so this means our AD2 will become plus 36 now. So its effect is taken now into the calculations and now we can ignore and similarly you can take its vertical also, which will be two times six and it will be acting in the downward direction. So its vertical effect is also taken. So when we draw the shear force and bending moment diagram, we can take this one also. Now you see here, this is your standard, now two degrees indeterminate problem. Rotation at B, which is D1 in the clockwise direction, we designate this as unknown. And then at C, which is D2 in the clockwise direction, this is our unknown current displacement. So rotation at B and C, they are taken as redundant giant displacements, D1, D2 unknowns. And AD1 now corresponding to D1, we don't have any externally applied action now. So that is equal to zero. At C now we have a clockwise moment, which is 36 kip feet. So we include that as 36 kip feet. So step number one, we have designated our Ds and we have now created this AD matrix 0 and 36. Next now, we go and generate the ADL matrix. So this is now your basic kinematic determinant structure. At B now you can see we have a fixed support and at C also we have a fixed support. Now here now to create the ADL matrix. As I said, four kind of loadings are involved. So first we deal with the due to direct loading, which we will call ADL prime. Because of the rotation at A, we will call it ADL double prime. 
because of the settlement at B, we will include that effect as ADL triple prime and then tetra prime for the settlement at C. So first now you see this is the basic kinematic determinant structure now. And you will see the loads also, 30 kip and 2 kip per foot, you can see here. The overhand portionality, we included that in the AD matrix, so don't worry about that anymore now. Now, how this, now let's verify this one. So B, A, B square divided by L square. This is off center, that is why A is 10 feet and B is 15 feet. So take out your calculators and now start now following me in these calculations. 30 times A, A is 10 times B square will become 15 square. So divided by, uh, multiplied by 15 square and divided by L square, L is 10 plus 15, 25, so 25 square. So this is becoming one zero. This is, uh, maybe I made some uh, mistake divided by uh, L square B, A, B square, divided by add L square, it should be, I think, add L square, divided. No, let's now verify this. B, A, it was actually B, L divided by 8. So, can you go back to the equations now, CR? I need your help here. So 30, Sir. yeah. So can you go through the calculations? What number we have? 30 multiplied by 10 multiplied by 15 squared divided by We need to verify this value now. Sir, 30 multiplied by 15 square multiplied by 10 divided by 25 square. That means we have 108. How much is it? 108. No, so that is not okay. Then we have 168.4. So it is divided by uh, maybe the original equation was, let's verify this now. So we were having actually PL divided by Eight, correct. Yes, now, how uh, B L by eight? It was the original one. Means it was B times L by two and uh, L by two multiplied by L by two square. Why I am putting L because L by two was A and B was also L by two, correct? And divided by now L square. So if we put L square, so how much we get from this value now? We get P L cube in the num numerator divided by eight, uh, the four times two, so divided by eight and divided by L square. So this is how we were getting P L square divided by, it was P L divided by eight now. We got the same value. Now, if we use this one now, so B is 30 and A is 10. And then we have 15 square and divided by this uh, L square. So L square is becoming 25 square. So 30 times 10 times 15 square divided by 25 square. This is becoming 108 and we have 164 points. So this is not correct. Let's confirm now the right hand side. So the right hand side will become equal to PBA square. So 30 times 15 times 10 square divided by 25 square. So 72, so it means the, the yes, one we are showing, yeah, yes, sir, yes, so it means this is wrong then, we need to make a correction here, this should be 108, 108, and these reactions now, how to find these reactions, you will have to take into account the balanced moment also, 
look how we are going to find this quickly <clears throat> it will be let's i'm finding out verifying this 19.44 right so 19.44 from where it is coming it is coming i am taking moment about this point is equal to zero uh, summation of mb is equal to zero so what do we have we have 30 times 15 30 times 15 divided by 25 so f the unbalanced moment was not there and f only 30 was there and if it was simply supported so 18 kip was coming to the left support now and 12 kip was going to the right but now the unbalanced moment we need to now balance so how we are going to balance if you see here 108 it is more than 30 so we need to balance this clockwise uh, counterclockwise with the clockwise couple now so whatever reaction now coming here it will be looking upward now it will be upward directed so it will be equal to plus now upward means it will be adding with this 18 we already found so it will become 108 minus 72 and divided by its moment arm which is equal to 25 so divided by 25 divided by 25 it is coming 21 is it correct yes yes sir is it sir no keep na 19.44 are yes sir 18 18 वो पहले आ रहा था 1.44 बाद में इसको कैलकुलेट करने से आता है तो अच्छा ठीक है अच्छा मैंने वो 21 की बजाय वो व्हाट आई डिड आई डिवाइडेड बाय 8 सो इट्स अ मिस्टेक एक्चुअली इट शुड बी सो दिस 19.44 इज करेक्ट यस सर इट्स करेक्ट 18 आ रहा था ना एंड देन वी हैव प्लस नाउ द डिफरेंस ऑफ दिस 108 minus 72 एंड दिस डिवाइडेड बाय 25 19.44 so it means the previous value written here it was wrong correct maybe what we do in making these slides we copy from the previous one so the, the number is also coming and then we forget to change the number so that was the situation actually but now if you see this a b span it is perfectly in equilibrium and all the member actions we found coming to the right one now WL square divided by 12 now that is the equation for the UDL so let's verify this 2 times L square means 25 square and divided by 12 so you see 104.17 and 104.17 we don't have any unbalanced moment 104 is balancing the 104 so half of this load will come to the left support half to the right support so WL divided by uh, 2 so 25 kip and 25 kip and from here now we are going to generate our ADL prime now ADL 1 prime will do what corresponding to D1 which is plus 72 minus 104.17 so this is minus 32.17 is coming and then corresponding to D2 we have this ADL 2 prime so 104.17 so this is 104.17 are you with me CR. Yes, sir. Okay, so with this now ADL1 prime matrix is generated. And remember again, your AML values will be coming from this one. AML and ADL values are coming from this diagram. Next now, we need to take the actual rotation which was at support A now and it is provided to which one to the basic determinant structure now so this is also a kind of loading now which is the end direct loading so here clearly if you see step number two part two is due to end direct loading which is 0 0.002 radian clockwise rotation at a and the values we will be getting will be adl double prime now when rotation is given so at this end the met in the same direction moment will be generated that will be 4 e i theta divided by l now so you, we can verify this value now so 4 times e i already we calculated in the feet unit which was 1 and 5 6 is point six seven. now rotation we have theta value so 0 0.002 we put and divided by 
this L, which is 25, which is equal to 53.33. So here you get 53.33. At the far end in the same direction by the same magnitude, so 26. Point, uh, no, this is rotation, so half and in the same direction it will go to the far end. So uh, if we divide this by 2, so we get 26.67. Now the balancing now couple, how we find out we the unbalanced now couple, we add them up 53.33 and this is plus 26.67 and divided by the moment arm which is 25, so 25 square, so divided by 25 again, so it is coming, I have something wrong with the calculations, 53.33 plus 26.67 and divided, okay, this is equal to, and then this whole divided by this 25 square. So this is coming uh, 3.4, this will become, oh, this will become 6 EI. So 6 EI already, we have these numbers, so 53.33 and we have 26.67 and this divided by 3.2 okay so unbalanced moment divided by the moment arm so divided by l25 only which is coming 3.2 now what we are doing here you don't need to go again 6 ei uh, theta divided by l square because this will become a lot of calculation so what we do we Add this unbalanced moment algebraically, 53.33 plus 26.66, and divided by the moment arm, which is 25. This way we get this balancing couple, which is 3.2 and 3.2. Now, right hand side, <clears throat> we don't have any activity, so all the member indexes will be zero here. Now, corresponding to D1, what we have now, we have 26.67 clockwise, so this is how ADL1, double prime 26.6. Six, and then corresponding to D2 we have 0 so A D L 2 double prime is equal to 0. So we took the effect of this 0 0.002 radians clockwise rotation. Now let's include the settlement at B now. So what will happen now we will clamp this A joint, clamp C joint and that settlement, how will it will be provided here? We will provide a roller guide here, the guided roller, and we will slide it in the downward direction. So what will happen now? You see here, it is coming down. These are fixed doing nothing here. And this is now the uh, settlement now, which is 0.75 inch. We convert this into 0 0.0625 feet now. The member and actions generated here, the corresponding member and actions, where it will give you the ADL triple prime values now. Let's verify this now. A, B span we are taking. When this settlement is coming, so how much is going to be the moment generated and how the moment, the direction. It will try to come back, so it means clockwise moment is generated. If you follow this cursor now, this end is trying to come back to its original position. This will give you the sense of this moment. And from where this 100 is coming, this will come from 6 EI was 156.67. And then this delta, delta is 0 0.0625 feet, so 0 0.0625 and divided by L square, which is 25 square. I'm running the numbers on, so it is coming 100 and exactly 100 we are showing. Then to the far end, the same direction and same magnitude, so 100 we have here also. Now the balancing couple now we need to find out, so 100 plus 100, 200 is the unbalanced moment. We need to balance it by the couple, so divided by the moment arm, which is 25, so 200 divided by 25, 8 kip, it is now the clockwise couple now. So we found all the member indexes for member A, B. B, C now we take, again to fix its direction, this displaced location, it will try to come back to its position, so it means clockwise 
moment is going to bring it back now. So this is the direction now. Span is the same. EI is the same. So 6 EI delta divided by L square again. So 100 in clockwise at the far end and also 100 in the clockwise. And this is the balancing couple. Now, now ADL1 triple prime will become 8 corresponding to D1 now. So 100 minus 100 is 0. So 0 we are putting here corresponding to D2. Clockwise means positive and magnitude is 100. So 100 we are putting here. So ADL triple prime is completed. Now we are left at the settlement at C support now. So a and B, we keep fixed and we slide down this C support by 0.5 inch now as given now. So here you can see and how will be the configuration. So this is here the roller guide is actually uh, applied and it is in coming in the downward direction. Moments now, member and actions we are producing and this will give you triple prime now, ADL tetra prime now values. So this will try to come back now. So it means counterclockwise moment will be generated far and also clockwise by the same magnitude. And this is the balancing couple. Now again, you can see 6 EI delta C divided by L square. So 66.67 is coming. Delta is 0.014 now feet here. Far and it is the same. And this is the balancing couple. So AD L1 tetra prime will become corresponding to uh, this D1 now, which is minus 66.67 and value is recorded. Responding to D2, we have this minus 66.67. So again, minus 66.67 is recorded here. We don't have any contribution from the BA support in case of the ADL1 tetra prime. So again, correspondingly now, we need to now add all these four numbers now to get the cumulative ADL now. So ADL1 now, ADL1 prime, double prime, triple prime, tetra prime. Correspondingly, we add those values. So minus 72.17, this is becoming your resultant ADL1 matrix. And similarly, ADL2, we add them the corresponding values and we get 137. This way we complete our ADL matrix now. So with the ADL matrix now completed, what we do now, we go to the stiffness, it's a routine, quickly I'll be running over it. This is now first step of this uh, first now, what we do now, we give a unit rotation at D1. So D1 is equal to 1 and D2 is equal to 0. We are keeping. Here you see now this statement here applied to the sketch. Now, let's verify this value now for the AB span. So this will become 4. EI was 1, uh, 5, 6, 6.67 and divided by L, which is 25. So 2. 4, 6 is, so 2, 4, 6 is point six seven here. Far end divided by 2 in the same clockwise direction divided by 2 and then the balancing couple now. So if I quickly you can do such kind of numbers, I multiply this by 1.5 and divided by the span 25. This way we are going to find out this quickly. So simple mathematical operations, how would you find out these member and actions now? Similarly, for the right hand side, we do the same thing and we find out all these member and actions now. S11 will be corresponding to this one location now, and it will be the algebraic sum of these moments generated. Why we are taking moments? Because these are corresponding to the unknown giant displacement, which is rotation now. So plus 2, 4, 6.67, and here again 26. This is whatever number is. So 2, 4, 6.67. We add them up and we get S11 is equal to 5. Three is uh, four three Similarly, at location two, which is a two due to one, which will become S two one. It is this plus one four three point three three. So 
the first column of the stiffness matrix is generated and remember this is the diagram which will be give, which will be giving you the values of amd matrix also right accordingly you will be taking your values from here now second column so second column what we do d1 we keep fixed now zero and d2 we apply a unit clockwise rotation now so unit clockwise and this is the deflected shape now how it is going tangent here it will be again clockwise again 4 ei theta divided by l 2 ei theta divided by l 6 ei theta divided by l square now s 1 due to 2 now will become 1 4 3 so here we write it and s 2 2 will become equal to this number which is written here so this is 6 7 so this should be also 6 7 Six two six six seven. So here now this we see here now this stiffness matrix we have created. Now and remember A M D second column will be also generated from this. diagram so next now we go and we solve the this equilibrium equation step number 4 we have all these numbers now e r i value is already embedded in these numbers now so we just simply take the inverse of this multiply with the difference of this matrix already we found adl and you see here it is coming with you Algebraic sign now, whatever it was, and it was minus, and this was plus, and finally we find D one and D two now. One is point zero zero two six, and D two is coming point zero zero five one now. After this, the step number five, which is the member and actions. Let's we identify these member and actions now. A M one two three and A M four and here here moment 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 and this one now. So let's now go and find out. This one, so A M L will be corresponding to this one now. So A M L one is how much it is corresponding, and it is coming twenty four point two four. Now you make a note of this one. A M L one is equal to twenty four point two four. I didn't see this solid number in the previous slides, but from where it is coming, so let's verify this one value. Rest you can verify it. A M L one I will be verifying. Remember, AML will be coming from the diagrams from where we created our ADL matrix. So let's go there now. And four now things were contributing there. One was the direct loading, rotation at A, then settlement at B, and settlement at C. Now, so let's take those effects and verify this twenty-four point two four. So let's go there now. And here now, this is now the diagram. This is now so from direct loading, which is ADL prime. Here is coming 19.44. So make a note now. This is 19.44. One contribution. So 19.44. I am writing on my calculator. Then due to this uh, rotation, due to this one now, we have. Uh, ADL one double prime. So we have here minus three point two now. So minus three point two I put. Then from this settlement at B we have effect of plus eight. So plus eight I'm putting. And then settlement at C we have zero now from here vertical reaction eight. So plus zero. So if you add them up. Exactly 24.24 we are having. So for the rest of the location, you complete the ADL matrix by the same this AML matrix here in this case by the same procedure. So you can go corresponding values. You can pick from all those four, four sketches and this one you can complete this one. Now. To complete the AMD matrix, where is it now? This is corresponding to 
first element of the AMD, first column we will be generating from here. Which one is this sketch now from where we applied a unit rotation corresponding to D1 now. And already we generated first column of the stiffness matrix from this one. This is the same one. You don't need to redraw this again. Just go to that sketch and grab your value. So AMD11 you see here. What is the reference for this one? Now again, the AM values be selected. So AMD1 will become minus 1600 now. AMD21 will become plus 1600. This is minus 1600. And here this is uh, plus 1600. AMD51 will become plus one, this four threes. And AMD61 will become plus and this AMDC1 also plus you should be matching its actual direction with the assumed direction of this one. And this is our positive reference in here also you can see. So this will give you the first column of the AMD matrix. The second column is going to where we apply the rotation corresponding to D2 and we completed the second column of the stiffness matrix. Now these are two values now. So AMD12 now is zero. AMD22 is again zero. AMD32 is minus 1600, and this is plus 1600. Similarly, AMD51 is zero. 62 is zero, and 72 this one, and this. And now you see all these minus 1600 plus 16 minus as I said, and this is zero zero minus. So AMD matrix is complete. The rest we need to put this now in this equation and. The matrix algebra already we have the rotations now. We just completed MD, ML already we have. So find out the product of this, sum it up with this uh, AML matrix and get the values of AML. And then after this AM, we put them on the sketch. It's a routine now, this one. And after this, what we do, we draw the uh, bending movement and shear force diagrams. So try shear force and bending movement diagram, you should be able to do. Let's verify quickly. 25 plus six is coming how much? So 25, 31 is coming. 31 times two. So because of UDL, we have a downward force of 62 kips and plus 31, we have 30 kip we have down. So 92 kip I'm looking at. So 92 kip should be upward also. So we have 20.03 plus 9.93 plus 26.32 plus 23.68. So this is coming uh, less. And what is the reason? It is it should upward and downward should be equal. Did we do some mistake now? Yeah, okay, I got the point now. So the point is plus six times two also we need to include, yeah. So actually this effect is not included here. I said that finally we need to include it as effect. So this is actually shear to the left of this 23.68. It is shear to the left of this C support and shear to the right of this support will be six times this two, which is 12 now. So we need to show that one also which is the shear to the right, this one. So that six, if it is included, then we have 91.96, which is approximately equal to 92. So you need to show that one also. And after that, you will have to try the shear force and bending. So with this, we are done now with the, this, this one, if I go here, so I need to slide this This one, I need to slide this to the left. And this number is, again, uh, we need to move this. So, but anyways, but here now we need to show another arrow. And with that, we need to show this 6 times 12, which is 12 kip in the upward direction. Now, we go to the next problem now. And one a student was asking me if rotation and let's say settlement both are involved. So how we are going to handle that situation. So he should be looking very seriously at this problem now. 
Here what we have, we have A, B, fixed ended beam, but in the now at 10 feet from this support A, we have internal hinge now. So the problem is uh, analyze the given beam using the stiffness method now. So as the internal hinge is not in the middle, it means this theta one rotation at A, it will be different from the rotation at B now. How? Very simple geometrical problem. This theta one will be equal to tangent inverse of delta divided by this 10 feet. But this theta two, which is rotation at B, it will be equal to this delta divided by 20 feet now, which is means this theta B will be half of this theta one. At the bottom, if you come here now, this theta one will be equal to this rotation. Now, if you are following my this cursor, and theta two will be equal to this rotation now. Means at this hinge, we will be having two independent rotations now, theta one and theta two, and those are becoming our unknowns now. So, two displacements now are two degrees of freedoms because of this theta one and theta two. And one is the vertical settlement now. So this vertical now deflection, that will become our third degree of freedom. Now horizontal effects we are ignoring. Otherwise, if horizontal also, if you include, then it is becoming four degrees in determinant problem. But in this case, it is three degrees in determinant problem, theta one, theta two, and this delta. How to handle now this problem in this stiffness method? Case is solved. Okay. So first, let's identify this theta 1, theta 2, and this delta. Now, I don't want to put these thetas and deltas. I would straight away, I want to go by the uh, these notations now. So you draw the sketch quickly now, show the internal hinge fixed ends now, and throughout it is loaded with 1.5 gig per foot now. It's a very interesting problem, and we will solve this quickly now. It is a three degrees indeterminate problem. These three degrees I'll be showing you in next slide. Now. Okay, let's move to the next slide now. So here rotation now, theta one we are showing by D one clockwise direction. Theta two, we are showing by D two clockwise direction, and the delta we are showing by D three. It is in the downward direction. These are our reference now positive directions, and our reference unknown giant displacements also. So three degrees indeterminate problem D one, D two, and D three now. If now, let me ask you this now, if this internal hinge was at 15 feet now, which is the center of this pen, in that case, D1 will become equal to D2. So we take this one independent. So this is becoming two degrees in determinant problem. If you solve this by three degrees, okay, well and good. But at the end, you will know that D1 was equal to D2. So just by observation, you can do that by solving a two degrees in determinant. So D1, D2, D3, we declare them as uh, now unknowns. Corresponding to those now, let's see now, corresponding to D1, do we have any externally applied moment? No. So it is zero. Corresponding to D2, do we have any externally applied moment now? No. So AD2 is equal to zero. D3 now, corresponding to this, do we have any externally applied now action now force now no again so this is equal to a d three is equal to zero let's a load of five cap was applied downward at this internal hinge now which was corresponding to d3 and it was in the same direction downward so then we include that five so we have five including. if we don't have so we put this so our adl matrix is generated now from the basic principle now, what we do now, we generate now the 
this is now your basic determinants. What we are doing at the hedge location, we are just putting that fixed support now. So this is your basic kinematic determinant structure or this uh, restraint structure. Now what we do now, at this fix, now fixed ended beam, we find out all the member and actions now. Can fit, you see here the hedge location at this. Why? Because the corresponding actions we will be looking for now. So WL square divided by 12, we are getting all these member and actions by using that simple relation. Now. Corresponding to D1 now, if you see this 12.5 kip, it is in the same direction. So 12.5 now, this is becoming our ADL1 now. Corresponding to D2, we have this minus 50 now, which was rotation to the right of this edge now. So minus 50 is the corresponding, but it is in the opposite direction. So we take minus 50. Corresponding to D3, which was the settlement at this location. So we have this 7.5 and 15 reaction board are in the upward direction. Our settlement, the D3 was in the downward direction, means these actions are in the opposite direction. So we have minus 7.5 and minus 15, which is minus 22.5. So we have we complete this minus 22.5 now. Remember, your ADL matrix is coming from here and your AML matrix again will be coming from this sketch now. Now, generation of the stiffness matrix now. So how we generate it, turn by turn, we will be giving a unit displacement now. Corresponding now, we are coming how to give, corresponding to D1 now. So you see here, the left side, we are releasing, we are providing a hinge support here. Yeah. Rest, all the locations are fixed now. E1 at the hinge now, the right side of this is fixed now. That 4EI divided by L, 4EI theta. So 4 divided by L is how much? 10, 4 divided by 10. This is how we get this action produced here, 0.4EI. At the far end, it will be half of this, so point two. And this is 6EI delta, 6EI theta divided by L square. So these are the, this is the couple now, which are the vertical reactions at A and at the hinge now. At the right hand side, we don't have any activity and it is not going to let the moment transfer here because it's a fixed support here. So all the member and actions for this right portion are zero. Coming to pick the values of stiffness coefficient matrix. Now remember the first column of this stiffness matrix will be generated from here as well as the AMD first column is going to be generated from here. Now corresponding to D1 we have this 0.4 EI. So this will become your S11. S at 1 due to 1 now. So 0.4 EI and here you see the value. 2, 1, which, will, which is the action here now, which is 0. So S2 due to 1 is equal to 0. So we have, so we have written this value equal to 0. S3, 1, which will be in the direction of D3 now, which was downwards, but we have here what? Upwards, so minus is coming here, and its magnitude is 0 0.06 EI plus 0 from the right portion now. So minus 0 0.06 EI we have included. That easily you can create the first one. Second now corresponding to D2. Now here all this what we are doing is written. D1 is equal to 1 we are applying and D2 we are keeping equal to 0 and D3 also we are keeping equal to 0. Second now corresponding to now D2 we are applying a unit now. Here you see theta is equal to 1 we are applying. And the left hand side rotation we are keeping zero means it is fixed now. So this will become 4EI divided by L. L is 20 now instead of 10. So 4 divided by 20 is 0.2 EI. Far end is half of this, and this is the balancing couple now. This will generate the second column of the stiffness matrix, which will be S at 1 due to 2, at 2 due to 2, and 3 due to 2 now. 
S11 we don't see any moment now here in this n corresponding to D1, so it means it is zero, which is written here, and it must be matching the S21 which we found in the previous slide. S22 is now this value, which is 0.2 EI, since it's clockwise matching the D2, so 0.2 EI, and then S32 is now the summation of the algebraic sum of these vertical reactions corresponding to D3 now. So we have plus Y plus because it is the same downward direction as that of D3 now. So 0 0.015 from the right portion and from the left portion we have zero now. So S32 is coming 0 0.015 EI. And remember third column of the uh, second column of the AMD matrix will also be completed from this question. Next now the settlement is now involved, so rotation already you knew from up till now discussion, but now when the settlement is involved, how to include that one? So now that specific student now who was asking, so now how we are including that one, he should be very careful now and should pay attention. Now how we apply the unit settlement, now we apply a roller guide, the other locations we keep fixed. And because of this roller guide, we slide this position in the direction of D3 now by a unit displacement. Now, one is a provider here. So this is the new location. And this is now the distorted now shape of the modified shape because of this settlement of this uh, sketch. Now, original is this top one straight line, but it is coming to this one now. Left portion, if we select now, it will try to come back to its position now. So this is how this counterclockwise direction we have found. It will be 6 EI delta divided by L square. So L square is 10 square means 0 0.06 this member and moment. Far end the same direction, same magnitude, and this is the balancing couple. Similarly for the right portion, again it will try to come back. So when it can try, when the moment applied is in the clockwise direction far end moment and this is now the balancing couple now. How we pick now the values of this third column stiffness coefficient matrix S13, S23 and S33. S13 it is corresponding to one now which was D1. So it is minus 0 0.06 EI. Why? Because it is counterclockwise. Our assumed D1 direction was clockwise. So here we record it. S23, it is clockwise 0 0.015, so 0 0.015, and S33, it will be the summation of this one, and it is in the D3 direction, so both are positive, so 0 0.012 plus 0 0.0015 EI, which we sum up when we add them up, so it is coming 0 0.0135 EI. S33 is generated, and third column of the AMD matrix is also generated from this sketch now and here you see what we are doing now d3 we are providing equal to one which is here and d1 and d2 we are putting equal to zero so here you see the roller guide it is not now allowing any rotation it is only allowing this sliding in the vertical direction with this now our this you see here now in a very nice form at the bottom in the center of this the screen now here you see the S matrix generated now. EI is obviously there so you outside the bracket now you can take out this EI count. After this now AD matrix is generated, ADL is generated, stiffness matrix is generated so now we are in a position to move to uh, step number four now. We use this equilibrium equation and we find out D1, D2, and D3. So this is D1, D2, D3. I don't need to explain now this matrix, simple matrix and general. Now. Here you see here it was with I, but when we take N so it is becoming one more EI now. And this is the D1 EI values now. With this now we we, we can move now to step number five. Let's we are finding out these member and actions we are selecting vertical reaction at A is AM1, vertical reaction at B now AM2, 
uh, moment at a am now hinges what far i am finding out am4 and am5 now already it's an internal hinge and these should be equal to zero if not zero something is wrong with the calculations but let's verify this zero so that's why i'm using this am6 is the moment so am1 and am2 so now it's easy now how we pick these values you see these are now AML1 corresponding. Again, reference is now the one we selected for the AM. Now that is our reference now. So we go to the, from where we generated our ADL matrix, we are completing, completing our AML matrix from the same one now. AML1 will become your 7.5, so we recorded 7.5. AML2 corresponding to this is this 15 value, so we write this 15. AML3 corresponding value is now it's in opposite direction, so minus 12.5 now, so minus 12.5. AML4, it's in the same direction, so plus 12.5. AML5 is this one, it is in the opposite, so minus 50. And AML6, it is 50, so 50. AMD matrix now, let's generate, and as I said, it will be from where we generated the first column of the stiffness coefficient matrix, and this is that one where we gave a unit rotation corresponding to the D1. This was that one. So now AMD11 will become your minus 0 0.06 EI. AMD21, which is at B now, it is zero now, and similarly, you can pick the, these other values also referring to this one. Now, a second column of the AMD matrix where we apply a unit rotation corresponding to D2 now and the corresponding values you will be taking now from here. Make sure that you get the appropriate sign also. And then third column will be generated with where we give a unit translation corresponding to D3 now. Already you have these values. So, from here now, from here, if you remember, the third column of the stiffness matrix was generated. So now, the third column of the AMD matrix we are generating from here. So this will become your AMD 1, 3, and this will become your AMD 3, 2, 3. And this way now we complete, this is now your completed AMD matrix. Now. Rest is the simple now mathematical operation find out the product of this, add this with this one, and you find out all the member reductions. And if you see here AM4 and AM5, how they are becoming equal to 0 and 0. This is, you see the reaction on. So AM3 now, we assume this in the clockwise direction, but it is coming in counterclockwise, so we put this in the counterclockwise direction. All these member reductions corresponding, you can see AM1, 24.38, AM2, it is 20.60, AM345, and this is 61 now. And after this, what we do, we draw the shear force. And when here again, in the bending moment at the edge, you can see it is coming zero now. So this is the complete uh, shear force and bending moment diagram. And after this, we have these assignments. So if you have any question about the assignments, you can ask from the CR now. And these are the references. Now you can turn on your mics now. You will be running to the next class also. But I am here now to answer your questions. Now, especially that student who asked me if rotation and settlement is also deflection is also involved at a giant, how we deal with it. So I hope this problem number three covered that situation. Okay. Yes, sir. Clear. Clear it. Uh, yes, sir. Rest of the students, CR, Mr. Sijar is saying it is clear, but what about the other students now? Okay, I, if I, right now, if I am not getting any now question, I assume that you go within this week now. Following week, we are not going to have any class, right? As now you got the exam schedule also. So the week of 22nd June, it will be your exams now. So this, these three problems, you go three, four times each problem now, and you ask yourself the questions that from where these numbers, if they are clear, it's fine. 
If they are not clear, you go the second time, third time, fourth time. If you cannot solve them, then next lecture may, may be not the coming. The next lecture, you can ask me questions now. Remember, now we have a now we have now mold these problems now for the stiffness method. The same mold we will be using for the rigid giant frames, and we will be using this for the uh, trusses also. So our remaining, not remaining, part of the remaining three, four lectures, again, we will spend by using the same now five steps, uh, exactly the same steps we will be following. So make sure that you properly go. And remember, your examination will be within now the topics, whatever we cover till today. Means the stiffness, the beam solution by the stiffness method will be also included. You got the derivations, you got the comparison, you got the now the definition of the various terms and then the method of using of these methods and what is kinematic indeterminacy, how we find it, the statical indeterminacy, internal, external, you should be clear. It's a lot of work, so you need to work very properly and make sure that you clear yourself about the midterm examination from the department. Okay, so with this, if you don't ha have any question, I'll say good luck to you and maybe we meet then after two weeks. Mr. Sajjad, CR, any question? No, sir. Okay, okay, so then bye-bye from my side. Thank you, sir. Okay.